video, I show you how to take some great location portraits by adding smoke. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. In this video, well, you can see we're out in the woods and I'm going to do a portrait shoot with a little bit of a difference. We're going to add some smoke to our portrait shoot. Now to create smoke in the woods, I'm going to use one of these. This is a smoke grenade, uh, the sort of thing you get from a paintball park. Now there is a bunch of instructions on the side, it's well worth reading before you start, but basically common sense prevails. Don't let this off in a public place, these can be used for, for warnings as well as for entertainment, and also use a bit of health and safety, these lit off sparks when you first fire them up, so uh, a pair of safety goggles is always a good idea. They can get hot as well, so gloves are really useful too. For your model, well, they can stain clothing, so if they're wearing white, you might want to consider that. And of course, if anybody has any breathing issues, you're gonna get a lot of smoke from these, so bear that in mind too. Okay, let's set the lights up, get our model in, and get shooting. So today, I'm joined in the woods by Fern, who's gonna be the model for this shoot. Now, before I go anywhere near smoke, I've got to get everything set up correctly because the smoke only lasts for a really small period of time. The smoke bomb, about a minute to two minutes at most, even for one that size. So first thing to do is to work out the exposure. Now I'm gonna use a bit of flash just to fill in the shadows here. I've got my Streak Light 360 uh, in a little soft box, but let's start without the flash and work out the ambient light. So working in manual mode, I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna take a meter reading and my camera is telling me F4. So the correct exposure is F4, but I want to underexpose by a stop to bring back some of the highlight detail, get a bit more drama in my shot. So I'm gonna work at F5.6. Okay, let's just take a test shot, see how this looks. At F5.6, that looks pretty good. We've got some detail in the sky and we've got some detail in the shadows, but it is quite dramatic. But Fern looks a little bit underexposed. So what I need to do is I need to get the flash to be the same exposure as my camera, F5.6. So let's just pop the meter underneath Fern's chin. Nearly there, we'll just adjust the flash power. So my flash matches my camera and my camera is underexposing the background. That should give me a great looking shot, but let's just do a test shot and see how it goes. Lovely, one more. So that looks really good. Now there's only one potential downside. We wanted blue smoke and uh, well, we've got purple smoke, which is all, almost the same, but clearly it doesn't match the dress. Now that could be a complete disaster, but fortunately I've got a little Photoshop trick that I'll come to later that'll solve this problem for us. So there's only one more thing to do before we actually set the smoke bomb off, and that's to make sure everybody knows what's going on. So I've been joined by my team, well, Sam, who's normally the other side of the video camera, and she's gonna be in charge of the smoke, and I'm in charge of the photography, Fern's in charge of modeling. So the idea is that, Sam, you're going to walk backwards and forwards behind Fern, move the smoke around, and that's basically it. Everybody knows what they're doing. We're good to go with the shoot. So, Sam, if you're ready, fire it up. Okay. So the smoke takes a while to get going, but as you can see, it works really well. Okay, stay there, Sam. Stay right there to let the smoke drift across. Okay, uh, you right, Ben? out the shop. There you go. Perfect. Okay, well done. <laughs> okay, so there we go. The smoke lasted for about a minute. That was pretty good going. We got some great little shots in there. You have to work quickly with smoke bombs because, well, they don't last very long, but that's all part of the fun. Okay, well let's set something else up and have another go. 
So we're going to do one more shoot with smoke and this time we're going to do a little bit more of a conceptual shoot. So we've got a small bird cage and we're going to put the smoke bomb inside the bird cage. Quick tip when you're doing this, make sure that the end where the smoke comes out from the smoke bomb is pointing away from your model. Okay, so uh, I've got everything ready. Sam's going to do the smoke and then move along with Fern because we're going to do a walking shot, moving the flash as we go. Everybody ready? Okay, let's do the shoot. Where you go. Okay, Fern, so if you want to start walking towards me, I'm going to move back this quite a bit. Sam, can you move this way? You can hold that down a bit lower, Fern, if you can. That's the way. Slow down a little bit. That's perfect. Towards me. Marvellous. Get closer, Sam. Keep going, keep coming. Lovely, that's it. Okay, so there we go. We got a nice little run out of that. We managed to reverse things, go the other direction. Hopefully we got some great shots in there, but there's only one way to find out and that's to jump over to Photoshop and I'm gonna do that right now. So as it turns out, the company that make the smoke bombs make a whole range of colors. One of them is also blue. So in theory, I could have saved myself a little bit of Photoshop work by getting a better matching color. But having a different color for the dress and the smoke does give me the option to change either to get a really close match. Not an exact match, but close. Let's have a look. So here's Fern in the woods with her blue dress, purple smoke and green background. And it's important to note that the three colors are all different and that makes this job so much easier. Right, let's go a little bit closer over the dress so we can see what's happening. Ideally, I would do this with an adjustment layer to give you that extra level of control, but because it's such a small dialog box with the adjustment layer, I'm actually gonna use a layer straight on top and do it this way with hue saturation. So I could just change the hue, and when I do, everything changes. That's not really the effect I'm after today. I wanna to be much more targeted and just change the blues in the shot. So I'm gonna come here where it says master and drop it down and choose blues. Well, that makes sense. That's what I want to change. So with the blues selected, is it actually blue the dress? Well, once you've selected any of the colors, and it honestly, it actually wouldn't have mattered which color I chose, I then have access to these little eyedropper tools. And if I choose the dress by clicking it, I'll find out that actually the dress is more cyan than blue, if anything. Right, that's fine, that's my basic selection done. Now I need to make sure that only the dress changes and I'm gonna do that by increasing the hue to maximum and the saturation to maximum. Now, pretty obviously, I don't want an orange dress, but what I'm looking at is the color around. Is it changing on these extreme settings? You will see it really clearly if it does. Answer is no, it's okay at the moment, but there's some areas I've missed. So I've missed bits, let's just get the eyedropper tool and we'll click a few areas just to add those in. So we can get as many of those as I can. There's a few little bits down here. Once I've done that, I can then come down to the little sort of, um, well, rainbow effect at the bottom, I guess. And I can move these sliders around. And if I go too far, you can instantly see which bits are also gonna be affected. So I don't wanna change that, but I do wanna get as much of these sort of the greeny cyans as I can. So let's just bring that out. And similarly with the, the purples, yeah, I don't want to affect the purples, but I do want as much purple in that dress as possible. Now, if Fern was standing against a, a more tightly colored similar background, I would have needed to do a selection before doing this. But as it stands, that's pretty good. Now, if you wanted a bright orange dress, stop there because that would be absolutely perfect. Very eye-catching, but really not what I'm after for this shot. I've just done that so I can see what's changing. Now I can come and fine tune the results. So clearly I don't need as much saturation and I don't need the hue to be there. I'm looking for a hue that kind of matches and a saturation that kind of matches the, the smoke. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna stop there and click OK. Now once I've done that, from a distance, this looks pretty good. We've got a nice match in color. 
but up close things aren't quite so good. There's a, a definite sort of weirdness in colour around here at the top of the dress. So to deal with the small areas, I'm just going to make a brand new layer. I'm going to come to my foreground colour, which is currently black, and I'll just sample a nice bright purpley colour from up here somewhere. That'll do. And then, with a paintbrush, I can just paint that colour onto the dress directly. So with a nice small brush, and we'll just add in the, the strap, which is more grey, if anything, and the, the other one here. And the same with the other colours here as well. That's maybe a little bit light in colour for that area. Let's just see if we can sample a darker colour. There you go. Now, you're looking at this, I reckon, and thinking that is the least convincing paint job ever. It looks like you've just taken a paintbrush and gone over the top. Well, that's because I've just taken a paintbrush and just gone over the top. I will make it better, but first thing to say is to get this to look better takes a bit of time. Not a lot of time, but more than we have in this video. You really don't want to sit and watch me paint around the edges of the dress. So once you've done most of the work, you then need to blend it in. And I'm going to blend it in by changing the layer blending mode from normal all the way down to colour towards the bottom. And that will pick up the texture from one layer and the colour from the active layer. I can even drop the opacity just to soften the effect down slightly. And that should allow me just to add in some colour to those areas. Okay, so there you go. There is my blue dress turned purple, matching the smoke and creating a wonderful picture out in the woods. Well, that really was a great fun shoot. Fern did brilliantly, the woods looked amazing, and the smoke really added that extra element of excitement. Now, if you want to see more videos for myself and the other amazing presenters here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do. You've got to click on the uh, subscribe button. Um, I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.